Okay, what I was doing, uh, I was uh, mostly a student. I spent most of my uh, time uh, studying. But uh, despite all that, I would still be uh, drawing and uh, painting on the side. So I can say that's the only job I had. And not only it was a great passion for me, but it kind of helped me a little bit during the holidays. Sometimes I would have uh, orders and uh, I would be painting too. And it was, it was just like something great. Because back in school, there would be some people telling me don't focus too much on the art. I mean, uh, because artists have always been uh, starving. <laughs> art doesn't uh, exactly. feed its... Uh, it uh, doesn't pay. Is it I mean, yeah, that's, that doesn't pay. And it was always great that when I would uh, go back to school with a little bit of money and tell them, well, it seems this time the art fed its man. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 speaking of that, uh, who, who most encouraged you then? Because, again, there were those who were telling you that uh, don't get too involved in it. But, but who was the greatest influence for you? Who, who encouraged you to continue on with the, your studies and your, and your art, to, art studies particularly? Yeah, the persons that truly uh, encouraged me were my parents. It was not easy because, like, I mean, when you grow up in Senegal, I mean, people see fine art sometimes as something that is too impractical, especially it is a developing country. People are more worried about uh, basic needs, I mean, such as food and drink. But my father understood. And even though he's not an artist, he's a mechanical engineer. But he understood that I had this strong passion about my art, and he kind of helped me. And any time I needed uh, material, he would be out there and... Uh, help me get the materials. And my mom's as well. And not only uh, they help me uh, with the advice, but sometimes they would be playing the role of the art critic. I would be out there painting and they would give me ideas, suggestions, as if they were ones uh, that were supposed to do the, the art critic. Yeah, they have helped me a lot with my art. If it wasn't for them, it would have been hard because, I mean, you always hear these people saying, oh, you know, don't do art, you know, that's too risky. But my parents, I mean, they were, they really helped me they kind of accepted it. And I think uh, those encouragements led to the fact back in uh, 1997, I uh, won a drawing contest when I was working for this uh, organization called JEP, which is, uh, which is dedicated to the training of uh, local populations on the prevention of health issues. Yeah, my parents really uh, did help me a lot. How important was it to have that kind of encouragement in your corner? I mean, uh, it is very important because I think the most devastating thing for an artist or just anybody is just to be in the house and be this outcast. You're just doing something and you realize uh, when you go out there on the street, maybe people don't understand what you do and maybe the image of people don't understand what you do. So I think uh, when you realize people are out there to help you, it gives you a, a more like a calm state of mind and focus more on uh, what you're doing. I think that's, that's really very important. We've got another piece of art I want to share with our viewers mm -hmm. as well. And Jabiru, what's going on here? Name this painting and so forth. And tell us again uh, why this particular painting and, and what does this canvas say? Yes, uh, this one is an uh, acrylic paint on uh, canvas. And the title is Gore is the Door of No Return. First of all, when you look at the painting, you're kind of stricken by this huge house. I uh, would like to underline the fact that this house right here didn't come out of my pure imagination. It is actually an actual house on the island of Gore. Now, this uh, Gore again, so our viewers may know, uh, what's the island of Gore? What's the significance of that island? Yeah, that, that island uh, has a great significance in the history of uh, African people because it was built as a storage unit for slaves before being shipped to uh, America, Caribbean, or other parts of the world. So it's like, a, it used to be like a storage unit. That's where they would put those people they captured before sending them away. So I entitled this is a canvas, Gore is a do the door of no return, because it deals with an issue in the past that is really sad, that is really terrible. And as you see it here, the whole history about slavery is kind of depicted. You see these people that are leaving, these are the sons of Africa, taken away from the motherland. And you see Africa shedding tears of sadness. He's like symbolized here as a mother. So they're leaving their culture, their culture, they're leaving their traditional housing, they're leaving their animals, they're also leaving the community life, Symbol, rep represented here by this ball, because you know in, uh, in Africa, in other places, people eat around the world. So not only it is a symbol of survival, but it is also a symbol of unity. They're leaving behind their music, they're leaving their uh, traditional beliefs, and they're just going through this door, and they call it the door of no return, because once 
out of this door, that would be the last time they would have any contact with the motherland. So they would just leave this door right here and know that they're going somewhere else, I mean, towards the unknown. And you can also notice the gray color right here. This gray symbolizes sadness, so it means by leaving, they're following the trail of sadness. And they're going to, uh, to America or to other places of the world to suffer even more. It looks like it's terrible, but it's, just the, but it's just the beginning of the pain they're about to experience. That's why I entitled it, Gore, the Door of No Return.